Welcome to Project Pack number 10, day three. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria, and I can't wait to see what Rick has done here. So we're going to move to spread L3. And on this spread... You see Bijou. There's Bijou. <laughs> and I'm going to do a series of straight and curvy tangles. As only Ricky can do. <laughs> and as actually as only you can do and as only Maria can do. Although I don't know if you can do straight tangles. I'm, I'm, <laughs> even my straight tangles are no, a little I'm, loopy. So paradoxically, I'm beginning spoken with a circle, but uh, that is the only curve here in, in spoken. And as you could imagine, the uh, inspiration for this tangle is from a uh, Bic spike, bicycle, bicycle wheel. Bicycle wheel, exactly. So. I always wondered how that thing hovered in the middle of the bicycle, and now right. I finally figured I'd I never really analyzed it before. But it's tension. Yes. So we're using a uh, takeoff from that circle, and then we aura the, uh, the first stroke. Now here I'm setting up to go in the other direction, and then in a holobaw fashion, which is our word for drawing behind, we will uh, put in those little spokes in the other direction. And if, if by chance you're just starting to watch this video for the first of t one in this series, uh, we've got a nice introductory video uh, that we encourage you to watch first. And otherwise, it doesn't make uh, any difference which order you do these in. So you can see I'm just uh, adding spokes or these bars that radiate out from that central circle. And until I just feel like there's enough of them. And, and the other thing that you can notice is that I am uh, rotating this little booklet each time that I uh, turn my tile, so each time I do a spoke. So my uh, drawing hand is essentially in the same position each time. And for me, drawing lines towards me is most comfortable. Uh, it might be different for you. But the, uh, the goal here is to find your comfortable place in all of this and then uh, just let it roll, so to speak. So there we have spoken. And we'll come back after we do all of the tangles and uh, shade them at the end. Oh, this is your new tangle, uh, Rick's new tangle, Hollis, which has uh, an energy that uh, is, is kind of fun to watch. So again, you'll notice we're doing um, uh, aura-ing, and that gap is pretty much uh, the same as the other one. I didn't really intend that, but uh, it, it's, it's working out that way. And you can look up Hollis on our uh, newsletter on how that came to be. And it is inspired by a, uh, a pottery motif and a painting motif that you will see uh, throughout much of Asia. We, we did a, uh, a trip out there, and we wanted to uh, do a tangle that had some connection to, to that part of this world, and uh, this is what we came up with. And it, it's really a neat little thing on the newsletter if you look at it. So it was inspired by, by a museum piece? Yes, we, right. and, and ironically, we saw the, the first idea of this in Germany, in a museum in Germany, but there you go. But it was on a piece of, from China, yes, right? Yes, yes. So we're using the principles of takeoff and land, and We'll also always, uh, we always have halibut at our disposal. And this is a great tangle to fill up an arbitrary space. And it can grow in any direction or way that you would like. And then it just loops back along on itself. And, you know, it's one of those cool tangles that is a surprise both to the uh, 
the tangler and the observer. Like, how did you do that? Because you can, you see, you can tie those uh, loose ends back in to to themselves. So it's sort of like a an infinity tangle of where did it begin? You don't really know. And we'll just put one more. You can always you can always add one more. And then you you get to decide where it goes, and when you're when you have all the ones that you need there. So you can see I'm taking advantage of uh, drawing behind here quite a bit. And just bring that right back. And that's our foundation for Hollis. So let's go back here to the... Uh, Hollis was named after your teacher. My flute teacher. Your yeah. flute teacher. Yeah taught me how to make flutes. So this tangle is named Ix, and uh, we saw the inspiration for this in the uh, Museum of Modern Art in New York. It was, there was a sculpture of these straight edges that were interwoven with each other, and, and while this does not represent you know, the sculpture, it was inspired by the sculpture. Right. Right. Which is which is the whole point of uh, of tangles, and you know, part of creating your legend is to be come so observant of your environment that you decide or discover patterns that you deconstruct and create your own tangles. So again, we're using uh, all straight lines here. And that initial bar shape with the little little triangle caps on the end, we're just going to go back and aura all around that. And I'm going to aura that shape twice. And once we get that shape aured, I'm going to go back in, getting ahead of myself here, because I know what's coming. <laughs> And we're going to do the same initial shape, but... Sort of like a barbell. Yeah, very much like a barbell. And using Hollabaugh, it's going to go behind. And we'll put those same little caps on. And I'm guessing it's called X because the two little I shapes make an X. Yes, I, I, think, think, I think that's that what we... It, yeah. right? And now let's aura that second shape and always doing it in a holobah fashion. It goes behind whatever is above it. So now that we've aurored that twice, and I, and I just did it twice. You could do it three or four times or different amounts. But here comes sort of like the punchline of the tangle is we're going to go back to that first shape and aura it twice, and look at how that uh, second one is sort of like woven into it. Effortlessly. Absolutely effortlessly, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, this, this is a very um, uh, modest rendition of this tangle, but it can go into many directions because oh, yeah. you keep adding barbells all over the place. Yeah. And uh, it's really fun once you get rocking. Yeah, so you can add as many uh, other shapes. They can, they can also be all sorts of different sizes. But now I'm going back to that second one and auraing that twice. So you can see how this can just evolve and, and, and go in, in between itself there. So that was X. So for this next one, I think this is one of your tangles, mm -hmm. right, babe? This is called... How do you pronounce Ravel. it? Ravel. Ravel as in, I'm going to guess like when you have a thread and you mm -hmm. separate the fibers. Okay, so start this with two orbs. And then we're going to take off. I'm going to do like an S shape all the way throughout the rest of this tangle. I'm going to take off from that top one and come down and land on that bottom one. And now... I'm just going to do these like anchored auras. So each end 
comes off that orb and lands on the other one. Each, of, each, each line starts and ends at the same place. Right. But they sort of separate on the way, and that's the raveling or the unraveling. Unraveling. Maybe it should be called unravel. Unravel. And we're just going to keep, uh, keep doing that until you decide that you've got enough little fibers in your ravel. And at any point, you can add another uh, orb. And you can, in this case, we're going to just tie right into one of the existing orbs that same S shape or that reverse curve. And I just go to one side and then the other and then go back to the other side. It's very rhythmic and uh, you don't have to think too much. Yeah. It's kind of, you can get lost really easily. So this we're going to go, you're going to start Xing it. Yes. Oh, you could do that. I didn't in this. You didn't, but, but you could Ix it. You could definitely do that same thing. So that same technique that D Rick did on Ix, um, right. by doing a, a couple of strands going on, on two dots and then go to the other two dots and go the other yeah. direction, back and forth, you, you weave it in very easily. It's funny that you did those in a, in a consecutive. I was just going to say that is yeah. really bizarre. Because on principle, they're very, very similar. So we invite you to, to try that out. It would be yeah, a, a very be interesting really uh, composition. So there we go with uh, Ravel. You can always add one more in there. Or if you're maybe French, you could say oh, Ravel. Oh, Ravel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I think we usually say Ravel. <laughs> So this is Paradox, and of course I couldn't do a, uh, a legend of straight tangles without getting this in there. And to set this up, I am uh, just going to put two triangles in this little space. And then the essence of, uh, so th this, this tangle is all one elemental stroke, which is a straight line. And you pick a triangle and you go from the dot or the corner to the edge. And the, uh, the trick that works for me and, and for most everybody is to turn your tile every time. And just go from the corner to the edge. And just coming off the the when you hit the edge, you just keep that gap about the same throughout the whole time. And uh, tell them the little trick about when the phone rings. Oh yeah. So <laughs> if you, if you know once once you're like a ways through it, uh, you know if you, you if you make one line all the way, uh, and you'll notice even this little last line just as a sidebar, I turn it just so I don't get myself mixed up. And uh, so in this case, I want to make a fan shape. So in, I'm going to do the mirror image of, of the, which corner I started at. So I was on the right side, now I'm on the left side. But anyways, like Maria was saying, if the phone rings, you could like stop mid-stroke, like right there. And then you know exactly where to pick up when you, when you come back. Because otherwise, if, if, you, if you don't, you don't really know which line. Right. So again, we just keep, uh, keep doing that, keep rotating the tile each time, and then you finish up. And what's the, the paradox, so to speak, of this tangle is you've got these beautiful curves that are the result of only straight lines. And that extra shape, and you can't really even see the two triangles. Okay, so this is flux, and in an earlier, I think it's yesterday's uh, video, you saw Maria's flux, and this is how I ended up doing it. Instead of the, I don't know really know why, it just happened. That yeah, time. so it's the same principle of these shapes and then orbs, but instead of doing that little hook on the shape, I did this 
um, teardrop shape and I just put them wherever they want to uh, sprout out. And this is a good example of how you can take the principle of a tangle and make it yours. And it's one of the reasons that we have so many people teaching in so many different ways and tangling the same tangles because it gives the idea, uh, I want to just point out, look at this line. I start out really light and then I add some pressure as I go so I get a thick and thin on there. Then we put the orbs in and if there's a big enough space left over you can add littler ones. So you, you find the, the biggest uh, circle that you could put right. in, in the f as the first one as you put down. As the first one, right. The, the whole point of this is to for you to create your uh, interpretation of these tangles. You're a legend, right? So you can look to us and other tanglers for inspiration and then take that inspiration to a place that only you can take it. You see I'm going back and those little spaces that are too small for an orb I just uh, filled in with ink. So that's my flux. Okay, so in this next one, we're going to do a tangle called Dex. And this is a tangle that was inspired by looking at skyscrapers in New York City. Maria and I were invited to do a, an award ceremony at the uh, Statue of Liberty. And so we had a, uh, some time off and we're walking around lower Manhattan and we see these buildings with these windows and we thought, wow, there's a pattern there. And we're actually showing a, a different way of approaching it uh, the first time we did it, we did these little solid squares, but it's easier to do it with the grid. So you make I a agree. grid, yeah. right? And then you think, oh, this looks like floors, but there's going to be a different sequence to doing those squares. And that is that we're going to do not every single intersection. We're just going to do it where the, the squares are parallel See, like how the, the side of that square faces the other square. So, so you're lining them up on the diagonals. Right. <coughs> so essentially, we're going to do, do it in the diagonal of that grid, and we're just going to put a square, a fairly big one, at each intersection. And then I did one row, so I'm going to do another row matching up the squares. Right. And, you know, the name for this, Dex, well, so the inspiration for this was Windows, right? And what do you use to clean Windows? You use Windex. I think, I think, I that's, think that's what, what it was. was. So then remember. we just dropped yeah. the wind part and, and we called it Dex. So just imagining that, yeah, there'd be one over there. And again, these are all all straight lines here. I think this is the last one. I keep finding one more to do when I do this. And it's sort of fun figuring out where it would go off the edge. Okay, so the next step in this is to connect corner to corner of all of the grid corners that don't have a square on it in both directions. Okay? And now once all of those are connected, you can sort of imagine that skyscraper, right? I'm going to uh, just put some lines in, just pick one of the orientations and then put three lines in or however many lines in each one. And then I did an adjacent one at right angles. 
So it's, it's sort of like two levels of shading to the pattern because the sun was hitting it at quite an angle. And we'll come back and shade that later, but isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. That's Dex. So for our next, for our next curvy tangle, I'm going to do Fengal. And the history of this, I'll say, so this tangle is just a uh, curve and an S curve. And this is one Maria had been working on and working on, and like she would cover the newspapers mm -hmm. with a graphic one. And then we were out eating, and uh, I was showing them to him. I was all excited, and I were sitting at a, a little table and having a glass of wine, and and uh, I pull out all my newspapers. I said, "Look at this! This is so exciting! We could do this. We could do that." And then we get a, a call from Molly. From Molly. Was it? Yeah. yeah. And she says, what are you doing? I said, I'm showing, we're sitting at Fang's, what was the name of the uh, Japanese restaurant we were at. And um, I, I'm, I'm showing Rick a new tangle. She says, oh, you mean a fangle. <laughs> so hence the name. Fang's. So that's part fangle. of the legend of that. And you connect those S shapes, the tips of one to the side of the other. So like the, ha like the halfway point on the side. And, and then you... Uh, You've got this other space that you can do so much with, and I'm just picking one option here. Uh, if you if you uh, look up Fengal on the app or you uh, research it on the uh, newsletter, you'll see a wonderful set of options. But instead of, look, you could pretend that was a window, right? And then you see the other part of the Fengal petals behind it. So there's all sorts of things that you can do with this tangle. And it's it, a, when you work big, there's all kinds of things yeah, you can do. And yeah. that's, that's just what I was going to say is... Uh, this doesn't give you much room. If, but when, whenever you do a tangle, the bigger you work it, the more options you have to then fill in the spaces that whatever that tangle is creates. So there's fangle. Let's go back over here to our straight side. And I am going to do a, ta a tangle called Shattuck. You've seen this. Uh, I, think, I think Maria did it uh, in the previous one, and mm -hmm. you, you're going to see it again. And again. And again. <laughs> and hopefully you will do it as similarly or differently uh, and take inspiration from all the variations in this series. But on this side, I'm going to do my shattuck with all straight lines. And I'm establishing uh, two bands of, uh, with a little orid gap there to go back in and put my straight shattuck in. And the way I'm doing that is sort of at a 45 degree angle. I'm just gonna put these nice orid straight lines down and I'll turn my booklet, and then at an, the opposite 45 degree angle or a 90 degree angle, I'm going to do the same thing. And just keep going back and forth. And then do the same thing on the other side And you can see that nice over and under developing. I, I hadn't planned it, but it's sort of it's neat to see how it looks like it's transitioning from one side to the other. So there's straight shattuck. Mm -hmm. It actually is a comp almost a completely different tangle. Right. So I thought, well, let's let's play with that idea and let's do the same tangle. But instead of all straight lines, we're going to do shattuck again, but with all curved lines. So I'm taking the same approach, but instead of doing a right angle, I mean a 45 degree angle, I'm going to do an arc that takes off on one side and lands sort of 90 degrees on the other. 
and then again aura that to the end and then rotate the surface here a little booklet and do the same thing I'm going to take off land on the other side and then aura that so we're doing the exact same tangle but we used curved strokes instead of straight strokes and you can it's a really great example of how look at that you change one element yet keep the same principle and get a different look so there's curvy shattuck so we're hoping you're going to fill in the rest of these yes. uh, with your favorite tangles of curvy and straight and maybe doing different versions of curvy and straight. So let's go back and uh, add some shading to all this. And uh, I'm going to play just with the over and under. And at first I put some graphite around that orb. And I'm just going with my tortillon and uh, smoothing out the graphite just to enhance that over and under. Just put a little bit down there and then move it out with the, with the uh, tortillon. So there's shaded spoken. And now I'm going, taking the same approach with uh, imagining those little Hollis tendrils being over and under and uh, just emphasizing that. And then if you've got a little bit of graphite left on the tortillon, you can always just go over and add a little love and character to different places. So let's go back over to X. And the idea here was to just give a little shade where, again, one part is going under the other. And if you have a, like a bigger space and lots of X going on, you can, uh, you can have lots of fun with shading this and shaving, shading the bevels and different ones differently. Nice. And if after you do the tortillon, you see, oh, there's a little gap there, you can come back in, of course, with your pencil and just uh, sparkle that up a little bit. And under the ravel, you'll notice I'm uh, just again putting the graphite where the uh, where the under part is going under the over part there, and then smoothing that out. A little bit of graphite on the ends. Oh, well, there's a little bit of X in there, right there. Yeah, a little bit. They look like penguins. <laughs> <laughs> Cycloptic <laughs> penguins. <laughs> <laughs> Rightio. <laughs> so I'm on the uh, paradox where those lines come together. I'm just re-emphasizing that uh, uh, the dark, the darkness of those lines coming together, and then smoothing the graphite out. There's many different ways you can approach this, but that's one of them. Again, you can you can see many many variations on the app or. Uh, in, in all sorts of places online. So for the flux, I just load up the graphite down at the narrow end, end of those little teardrops or leaves and then pull it out with the tortillon. And with the graphite that's left on the tortillon, I'll uh, put a little uh, low light on the, sometimes on the tips of the leaves and uh, on the orbs in between. Isn't that cool? Hmm. So that's my flux. So here we are with, uh, with decks. So I'm going to go p back and just pick one of those uh, lined the striped seconds, facets. The yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then leave the other one white, and you'll have a, end up with a wonderful texture there. Right. So there's Dex, and there's, again, many ways we can work approach with Fengal, but I'm going to just work with the uh, over and under 
on this because there's that nice hollow bar action there. It looks like it's spinning, right? Right. One of those little uh, pinwheels pin that you blow yeah. on, right? Yeah, it's moving. And with Shattuck, we'll do the same approach on both of them. I'm going to shade to either side of those uh, sort of like curbings and then shade the part that's going under on that inner pattern and then smooth it out. And it's like, whoa, this is really cool, right? Beautiful. It almost looks like it's etched. Hmm. And same principle on the curvy one. So we'll just go back here and then smooth that graphite out. So I, I think that's a, a really cool example. Same tangle, different interpretations. And I like that idea so much that one of the things you can do with this, uh, with this booklet, with this legend, is pick one of the sections that your die might take you to and pick an instruction. So in this case, I'm going to say, on the next roll, make the curvy tangle with straight lines or make the straight tangle with curvy lines. So it gives you an option to play with that. So this was awesome. Thank uh, you for playing with thanks us. Thanks for playing along. And we look forward to uh, seeing you tomorrow. Bye. Bye now. See ya.